Hello everybody, thanks for joining me back here today. Um, today I want to show you uh, a really special speaker. Um, this is one that um, after looking over tons of different speakers for myself, this is one I ended up settling on. Um, so you know it's good. I can I can pretty much get whatever I want um, within within reason. I was looking for anything really six grand and under. Um, I'd even go up above if something was a little uh, uh, what was really special. But this is the speaker that I ended up choosing for myself, and I'll tell you why. Um, I was actually. Uh, I was actually replacing a speaker that was much more expensive than this. It was about five thousand and change. So, um, and I think this one's better. Um, so I'll tell you what I like about it. This is called the Totem Acoustic Hawk. Uh, this one is uh, sensitivity of eighty-eight dB. Um, that's that's a little optimistic. I think these are probably the most difficult to drive two-way speaker in the totem line. Um, no receivers need apply here. You want a solid state two-channel amp. You can do it with two, so make sure you got power. Um, this one, this one likes power. I mean, there's no, there's no getting around it. Like, uh, uh, it's a small two-way design. You think, oh, that, you know, that'd be easy to drive. It's six ohms. Um, but, but no, I, my recommendation, I think totem recommends 60 to 120 watts of power or something. For this speaker, my recommendation is 200 watts plus. Uh, if you really want to drive this properly, I mean, you can drive it well on 125 watts with really good current, but it's really not going to come into its own until you pass 200 watts. Actually, the Parasound A21 is a perfect pair with this. Um, that amp is uh, 250 a channel into 8 ohms, so you're going to be getting 300 and right around 300 maybe 300 and change uh, with this uh, 6 ohm load um, but uh, you th this speaker is a full range speaker it's it's a five and a half inch woofer uh, one inch tweeter I think it's an MB tweeter from Germany this is a ScanSpeak Revelator woofer uh, specially tuned for totem for extreme long throw so it's a five and a half inch woofer but it extends deep into the bass uh, the things you get above the staff on this, uh, their staff model, is a bit more sparkle, a bit more detail in the highs, more bass extension in the lows. Um, also, the crossover in this is a 6 dB uh, crossover, which gives you extremely gradual uh, slope between the tweeter and the woofer, so it almost sounds like it's coming from one driver. It's just very... Uh, very sweet mid-range. This is actually, I've heard a lot of speakers and I'm talking a couple hundred thousand dollar designs. This mid-range is awesome. Uh, if you listen to female vocals or jazz, um, the mid-range on this speaker is really unbeatable. Um, it's very nice. Uh, now, obviously limitation again on a two-way design is you cannot crank the heck out of these. They play up to about 107 dB before they start to distort. Uh, you will hear it, the woofer, woofer will start bottoming out. Um, more power will help control this woofer a little bit better. Um, but also, if you, if you want a system that's going to play even louder than that, what you need to do is cross over this woofer, something like 60 or 70 hertz, uh, so it doesn't have any extension below that and then add a subwoofer and that will allow you to get plenty of volume out of these um, but I don't need a subwoofer I didn't I don't really like most of the time I don't like blending a sub with my mains um, that that crossover point is always you know it's, it's tough to blend unless you have a really well designed a really paired system uh, so I just like the full range um, full range tower on their own and this is full range everybody whenever I play these for people they they look around for where the subwoofer is because they extend um, they say the the minus 3 dB points at about 32 Hertz but uh, in room you're getting response in the 20s you know upper 20s mid 20s even you're you're getting some bass response out of these um, 
Okay, well, anyway, just like all the other totems, they are veneered on the outside as well as the inside. Um, they use the borosilicate paint uh, to dampen resonances in the cabinet, which is a uh, real heavy, uh, high mineral content paint developed by NASA uh, to eliminate resonances in a surface. Uh, totem doesn't believe in polyfill or foam that can actually uh, degrade over time and change the sound of your speaker. Uh, it also can slow down the air movement inside this, the cabinet. Uh, so this is a very fast bass, very clean bass. Uh, it's not muddied up by anything. Um, the crossover is extremely high grade, uh, real, real big uh, audio grade capacitors, uh, air core inductors, uh, internal wiring, um, and crossover parts is a, an area where a lot of manufacturers will actually cut costs because you can't see it. Totem doesn't do that. Um, Totem puts really high quality internals and you can definitely hear it in the sound. Uh, the wiring inside is Teflon coated, uh, silver plated, high purity oxygen free copper. Uh, it's not lamp cord or anything. Um, the, uh, what else can I tell you about these? Oh, this is the first speaker in the line that uses the gold plated WBT uh, by wiring terminals. Uh, I'll give you a close-up of these. Um, you can power the woofer and the tweeter with separate amplifiers. Uh, if you take the jumpers out, you can also buy a wire of them, which is two runs of cable from one amplifier, um, which can have some improvement as well. Uh, it is a ported bass reflex design, um, which is why it gets its incredible bass extension. Uh, well, one of the reasons, anyway, it helps out. Um, you also have a port on the bottom. It's not a port, actually. It's a mass loading chamber, another hole down here, um, where you can add weight in the form of um, like shot or non-order kitty litter, uh, kiln drying sand, uh, which adds some weight. It'll add some stability to the speaker, but it also dampens and tightens up the bass. So you got to be careful. You can't just throw 20 pounds of, of weight in there. I, for mine, I found that about, uh, about six pounds per speaker was ideal. Um, that's on my carpet in my room for my personal taste uh, with my equipment. So you may, you may be a little bit different from there, but six pounds and they're sounding really good. You put too much in there and you're going to over damp the bass. Um, so you got to be careful with that. Add a little bit at a time and then uh, see what you'll think with the sound. Um, this is also the first speaker to use the claw feet design. Down here on the bottom, this is what they call the claw. There's three of them. And then there's a ball bearing. The claw foot sits, the ball bearing goes underneath, sits right on top, helps decouple it from the floor. Uh, works very nice and it looks cool. Okay, this speaker, sound-wise, images like crazy. Uh, this thing will throw a sound stage. If you're right in between the speakers and you have good quality electronics and source material, this thing will throw a sound stage that makes the speaker disappear. If you put a blindfold on somebody listening, they couldn't find the speaker in the room if they wanted to. Um, they're that good. Uh, they image really nice. Um, bass extension, they, they have a touch of warmth. Um, to the sound as far as, uh, you know, compared to some of the other speakers, um, these will sound even more, even more analog, I would say, uh, than, than a lot of the other ones that are just a little bit clinical and everything. Extremely pleasing to the ear. Pair this with some high resolution electronics and it can't be beat. So, I'd love to play them for you. Uh, I am a sales manager of an audio store as well, so, uh, feel free to stop by if you're in Northeast Ohio. Uh, we have them at Extend Technologies. Uh, and I will give you the tour and uh, show you what these things can really do. So, uh, thanks for watching again. Uh, I'll have more reviews up soon, so stay tuned and subscribe. Um, thanks for stopping by. We'll see you later.